Welcome to a wonderful chair practice that will help you to enjoy the poses, to move deeper and to feel a distinct sense of alignment and correctness to the posture. So we're going to start our seated meditation sitting on the chair, using the chair to feel a nice, tall, erect spine. And then turn the palms up so they face the sky. Roll the front shoulders back and close the eyes. You'll feel the railing of the back of the chair gently pressing into the back body. So press the back body forward to open the chest more. Let the chair guide you. And with the inhalation, lift the front spine and roll the shoulders back. So more and more length, more and more tallness is coming to the front spine. Keep the face soft, the tongue relaxed, and then gently bend the elbows and bring the palms together in front of the chest. Observing the breath inside the body and placing that inner body with the breath. Let each inhale lengthen the front spine, lift the chest, and let each exhale move the trapezius muscles down the back in one smooth flow. Making an intent for your practice May it be healing, may it be transformative. And now gently releasing the hands back down to the thighs and gently opening the eyes. Our first pose will be Utita Trikonasan using the chair. I'll be doing the mirror image of you. So when I say right leg for you, I'll be doing my left so that you can follow me exactly. So go ahead and put your chair on the back of the right hand side of the mat and then step forward with your right leg forward, your left leg back, for Utita Trikonasan. Nice wide stance. Make sure the back foot is turned in and you lift the inner ankle to push into the outside edge of the foot. Then reach around with your left hand for the railing of the chair. And make sure that when you grab the railing, the back of that left hand is pressing against your front right buttock bone. Roll the front of the left shoulder back to open the left chest as you exhale and come down and place the right hand just on the seat of the chair. Now the left hand is holding the back of the chair and it's pushing that right buttock bone forward. With that action, push the tailbone forward and turn and twist, stretch more and more. Now if the hand needs to come down further, go ahead and move the right hand to the horizontal rung of the chair. But keep the front of that left shoulder rolling back and the back ribs pressing in, the chest opening to the sky. That firmness in the legs. Don't let the front buttock come out. Keep pushing it forward. Keep the back leg firm, keep pushing into the outside edge of your back heel. Shoulders back, back ribs in, and now stretch the right arm to the sky and find full trikonasan. Having that awareness of the back body, having the shoulders really open, the chest open. And then inhaling back up and exhaling, turning to the other side. So just moving the chair so that when you reach around with your right hand now, you're going to really be feeling the left buttock bone with the back of the right fist. The left leg is forward. Make sure the kneecap is facing straight forward. Firm the roots of the thighs. Roll the front of your right shoulder back as you exhale and come down, placing the left hand on the seat. When you place the hand, often the front left buttock will push out again. So once again, draw the front left buttock bone forward. Use the back hand on the chair, press the left buttock bone forward with that action and firm the roots of the thighs. If the right hand needs to come further down, go ahead and bring it to the bottom horizontal rung on the chair. But keep that connection with the right arm so that the front of the right shoulder is opening so the back body is staying open. Keep rolling the bottom abdomen to the top, press the back ribs in, open the chest, lengthen the collarbones, thighs firm, feet alert, as you stretch the right arm to the sky. Allow the front face to rest in the back skull so the neck is not tense. Keep stretching the arms apart. Keep moving the left buttock bone forward. And then inhaling back up. And exhale, release. Coming now to Vira Badrasana 2. So we're going to be sitting on the chair. So I've moved my chair in front of me this time. And now turn your left foot in and your right foot to the front. Make sure to lift the back inner ankle and push into the outside edge of that back foot. The front right kneecap is facing completely forward. Tailbone forward, pubic bone up. And begin to exhale and make a square with that front leg as you would for Virabhadrasana 2 normally. But having the hands on the railing of the chair, move the chair if need be so that when you come down to your lunge, the chair is there to hold you. Keep that back leg firm. 
Once we sit on the chair, often the back knee starts to bend. So keep pushing straight from the hips into the outside edge of the foot and make sure that your front knee is right over your front heel and that the inner right knee is moving to the outer right knee. Now use the hands on the railing to turn your right abdomen to your left, away from the front leg. So the organic movement is away from the front leg. Now lift the arms up, stretch the arms, keep the strength in the back leg, keep the front knee moving open, abdomen moving away from the front leg to the left, stretch the arms, trapezius muscles down the back and back ribs pressing in. Lift the chest, have that firmness in the legs and then exhale, bring the hands back to the railing. Just check the feet, see if the back leg bent or does it still have that integrity. And then inhaling back and preparing to change sides. So this time the left foot will be forward, the right leg will be turning in for Virabhadrasana 2 on the chair. Make sure the inner arch of the back foot is lifted and you're pushing into the outside edge of the foot that the leg is firm. The front kneecap facing completely forward, the quadricep muscles coming up the leg. Roll already the left abdomen to the right, away from the descending bending knee, and begin to lunge to Virabhadrasana 2. Lunging slowly so you can feel each part of the movement when the legs collapse, when they start to shake, when they move out of alignment. And then coming to sit on the chair. Make sure the back leg stays straight, that from the back hip all the way to the outside edge of the back heel you're pressing. The front knee is over the heel and the inner knee is moving to the outer knee. Now move the pubic bone up to the sternum, hands on the railing, and begin to turn the left abdomen to the right, away from the front leg organically moving the body in the opposite direction of the physical limbs. Now stretching the arm, keep the abdomen rolling from the left to the right, the back leg firm, squeeze the back knee, trapezius muscles down the back, press the back ribs in and lift the chest. Keep the sides of the neck even, the face soft, but the legs extremely firm, the feet alert, the tailbone moving forward. And then releasing the hands to the railing of the chair and slowly making your way back up feeling the sharpness of the legs, penetrating the femur bones into the hip sockets. And then exhale and release. So we can see how the chair really adds a dimension where we realize where we're unaligned and what it takes to hold alignment. Coming and sitting on your chair, facing normally now, sitting right back into the chair and place your feet so that they're parallel and facing forward, the knees also parallel, the thighs aligned with each other. Coming to Pashasan on the chair. First of all, roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, and now stretch the left arm to the sky. And with an exhalation, turn and twist to the right as you bend the left elbow. The tricep presses against the outside edge of your right thigh. As you turn and twist, your knees may start to separate and lose their connection, their integrity. So keep awareness of that through the feet, through the knees, reaching the hips. Using the inhale to lengthen the spine, using the exhale to turn and twist. Roll the front of that top shoulder back and press the dorsal spine forward to open the chest. Keep both of your arms firm and then exhale and release back up to sitting. Use the chair to roll the front shoulders back, to lift the chest, to broaden the sternum. And then inhale the right arm up to the sky and exhaling and twisting to Pashasan on the left hand side. So finding your connection with the arms, with the hands, become aware now of the feet and the knees. The right kneecap will want to move further forward. So draw the right kneecap back push the left kneecap forward and see how the hips now become stable. Use the inhalation to lengthen the spine, use the exhalation to turn, to twist and roll the front of the left shoulder back. Find the back ribs, begin to press them in and forward to open the front body and let the front face relax in the back skull, the trapezius muscles moving down the back, space in the neck and the ears. And then inhaling back up Bring the hands again behind the railing and feel that broadness come to the chest, the intercostal muscles stretching. And then exhale and release. Standing up, moving on to our next standing pose now, Virabhadrasana 1 with the chair. So placing the chair at the short edge of the mat, step your right leg forward and your left leg back. Keep the heel lifted of the back leg, the kneecap facing the floor, the heel facing the sky, and turn your left pelvis to your right. Then placing the hands on the chair, Make sure that you really feel that you're facing the chair with your hips. Bring the chair in so the shin is almost touching the seat of the chair and begin to lunge. So as you lunge, the chair is pushing the shin towards you and in this way the femur bone can be absorbed, that front femur bone can be absorbed into the hip, 
Keep the back leg very vibrant and use the hands on the railing of the chair to push the torso back to bring lift to the chest and length to the front spine. Head back, trapezius muscles down the back. Keep moving the tailbone forward and lifting the pubic bone up to the sternum bone. Stretch the back leg. And then slowly, gently straighten the front leg. And exhale and release. Changing sides, the left leg is forward, the right leg is back now, the heel is lifted, the back knee is straight, the knee is facing the sky. Make sure your hips are really facing the short edge of the mat, that they're facing the chair, and then putting the hands on the top railing, begin to lunge that front knee, the left knee, and when the shin meets the chair, allow the chair to push the shin towards you to absorb the left femur bone into the hip socket. Make that connection. Now press into your hands to lift the chest up, to roll the shoulders back and begin to arch and move the trunk backwards so the front trunk becomes longer and more stretched. Allow the head to move back, the trapezius muscles flowing down the back, keep the back leg very straight, the inner knee squeezed, the thighs stretched. And then inhaling back up. And exhale, step the right leg in. And we're going to find Uttanasana using the chair. So the feet are the width of the mat. Make sure that they're parallel, facing forward. The wrists are on the railing of the chair. And you want to be far back enough that your hips are right over your feet, not over the toes. Lift the arches of the feet up, lift the inner ankles, lift the kneecaps up, lift the quadricep muscles up. Make that connection of the thigh bone into the hips. Push the buttocks back, broaden the buttocks as you stretch the arms forward. See if you can get more length in the arms and the armpit chest in the side ribs, in the front trunk, keeping the sides of the neck even. And then inhaling back up and exhaling, releasing. We're now going to be using the chair in a fun, unusual way. We're going to turn it upside down. So go ahead and take the chair and flip it so that the seat is facing the mat, the top of the chair away from you and the bottom of the seat close to your feet. Remember, I'm doing the mirror image of you, so if you're getting confused, just look at how I'm placing my chair, where I'm placing it, and copy that exactly on your mat. Now go ahead and step your right foot up onto the seat of the chair, so the foot is lifted naturally, and move the left leg back and turn the foot in, lifting the inner arch and pushing into the outside edge of the foot. Roll the right abdomen to the left, away from the front leg. Roll the shoulders back, inhale, lift the chest, stretch the arms, inhale, and exhale, and begin to make a square, a lunge with the front leg. As you lunge down with that front foot lifted, you'll be able to have more sensation of drawing the femur bone into the hip socket, of deepening the front groin, and now reaching down and place the right hand on the railing of the chair and stretch the left arm up to the sky. So we find Parshva Konasan with the chair. Keep lifting that front foot with the action of the seat to feel how the femur bone integrates into the hip socket over and over again as you stretch the left arm diagonally over to the right. Roll the shoulders back and roll the bottom abdomen to the top. Keep the back leg firm pushing into the outside edge of the back heel, using each exhale to create more openness, more twisting to the sky. Lock the elbows, stretch the fingertips, and then inhaling slowly back up, having that awareness even as you come out of the pose. And then exhaling and releasing. So changing legs now, moving the chair to the other side of the mat, the left-hand side of the mat, Go ahead and place your left foot onto the chair and step your right leg all the way back so you have a nice wide stance. Make sure that the back foot is turned in and that you're lifting the inner ankle and pushing into the outside edge of the foot and draw the quadricep muscles up the legs, the front kneecap facing forward. Roll the front to the left abdomen to the right, away from the front leg, shoulders back, chest lifted. Preparing, inhaling, lifting the arms and exhaling, beginning to make a square with the front leg keeping that front foot lifted and drawing the femur bone into the hip socket, feeling the depth of the groin that's being created even as you lunge. And then exhaling to the left and bringing the left hand to that railing that's right there available for you and stretching the right arm to the sky. Keep lifting the front foot and with that action, feel the front thigh coming into the hip over and over again, making that connection. The back leg is alert. Turn the top arm and extend it diagonally over to the left and begin to stretch that side flank. Press the back ribs in. With each exhalation, roll the left abdomen to the right. Stretch the right arm. Stretch the elbow. Stretch the fingers, turning and twisting. Keep the tailbone moving forward. Don't let the buttocks poke out behind you. The back leg is firm. 
and then inhaling back up lift the chest before exhaling and releasing so we can see what that does when the front foot is lifted in that way we're able to connect more deeply with particular areas of the body in this case the root of the thigh keeping the chair as it is now go ahead and place your right foot on the chair and step your left leg back but this time the hips are facing the chair make sure your back leg is rolled in moving the left pelvis to the right the hands are holding the legs of the chair the shoulders are rolled back and try to stretch the front waists draw the front kneecap up the front thigh bone the quadricep muscles up create that firmness in the root of the thigh and now exhaling coming down bringing the left hand to the horizontal rung and turning and twisting to the right the right hand on the right hip coming to Parivrita Trikonasan make the legs like scissor blades keep them sharp firm as you roll the front of the right shoulder back the elbow back wind the right arm around behind you to maximize the opening of the dorsal spine the thoracic spine twisting turning chest open look up at the sky make the maximum twist that you can and then exhale release place the hands back on the bottom of the legs of the chair before exhaling stepping the back leg in and releasing the right leg changing sides bring the left foot onto the seat of the chair and move the right leg all the way back make sure the back leg is turned in and the right pelvis is moving to the left press into the hands to roll the shoulders back to trapezius muscles down the back and try to stretch more and more the front waists lengthening the front spine keep the legs firm visualize scissor blades as your thighs so you're keeping that firmness and keep drawing the left thigh into the hip socket as you turn now to the right placing the right hand on the horizontal rung left hand on the hip finding half parivrita trikonasan roll the front of your left shoulder back and have that awareness of how the hips are facing using the chair as reference point keep the roots of the thighs firm keep turning twisting pressing the back ribs in to open the chest and now wind the left arm around even further behind you and try to find more twist in the thoracic spine and the dorsal spine keep rolling the front shoulders back moving the shoulder bones back legs firm back heel charged and then release the hand unwind find that stability facing forward refirm the roots of the thighs and then exhale step the back leg in and release the left leg we're going to continue this work now moving to Parshvottanasana so taking your chair go ahead and fold the chair up and turn it so the seat is facing you the front of the seat is facing you right leg forward left leg back bring the chair towards you so the top railing is right there at the root of the front femur bone where it comes into the hip and turn the left pelvis to the right so you're really facing the chair now tailbone forward and lift and stretch the front spine roll the shoulders back keep the legs firm the hips facing forward and now begin to exhale and come into Parshvottanasana and as you come down absorb the railing of the chair into the root of the thigh draw it up invite it up so you keep that connection the hands come as far down as they need to using the chair to roll the shoulders back and to stretch the front waists and just keep observing what's happening to the legs when are the hips moving keep rolling the front left pelvis to the right sucking the top railing of the chair into the hip socket with the action of the right quadricep press the back ribs in to press the chest open to the chair without losing that connection of the femur bone the fingertips can come to the floor if need be or they can keep holding onto the chair keep the sides of the neck even the trapezius muscles moving down the back before inhaling looking up and slowly making your way out even as you come out checking that the hips are still facing forward the front left pelvis to the right and then releasing the chair and changing sides so the left leg is forward now the right leg is back bringing the chair right in so the railing of the chair helps connect the left front femur bone into the hip socket move the tailbone forward and with this action stretch the front abdomen shoulders back chest lifted keep the roots of the thighs firm the right front pelvis bone moving to the left as you exhale and gently make your way forward to Parsvottanasan as you come down you'll feel the front of that left thigh possibly bulging and pushing the chair away keep drawing the quadricep muscles up and drawing the chair into the action of the pose in this way deepening that connection of the front groin making that experience that understanding 
Keep the trapezius muscles moving down the back and the front waists long. Don't make a C shape with the spine. Walking the fingertips as far forward as they need to for your maximum stretch. The back thigh is rolling in. The front right pelvis is still moving to the left. Feeling the action of both of the pelvic bones as you exhale and come forward. Sternum towards the chair, forehead towards the chair. Press the back ribs in and have a few smooth breaths before inhaling. Looking up, gently making your way out, making sure the hips are still facing forward as you come out. Shoulders back, chest open, observing that state of inner expansion. And then releasing and moving the chair away from the thigh. So unfold the chair so it's a chair again now. Make sure it's unfolded all the way and it's stable. And come to half Uttanasana with the wrists on the chair. The hips right above the feet. The feet are completely parallel, facing forward. Lift the inner arches of the feet. Lift the inner ankles. Lift the inner ankles to the inner knees. The inner knees to the inner groins. And the inner groins into the hips. Lift up. Lengthen the inner groins up. Keep stretching the arms, squeezing the elbows straight. Keeping the shoulders broad and pressing the back ribs in. And now coming up and turning the chair so you can sit on it facing normally. Pashasana, so make sure your feet are facing forward, your knees are facing forward, your thighs are parallel. Inhale the left arm up to the sky. And this time, as you twist, come all the way across so your armpit meets the thigh and you can hold the bottom leg of the chair. And then wind that top arm around as far as it can behind you, rolling the front of the right shoulder back. So it's a deeper Pashasana than the first one that we did. Try to parallelize your knees to remain aware of the hips of keeping them even as you turn and twist. Use the inhalation to lengthen the front spine. Use the exhalation to roll to twist. The left abdomen rolling to the right. The left lung rolling to the right. And releasing. Rolling the shoulders back. Lifting the chest, relaxing the abdomen before inhaling and lifting the right arm to the sky and exhaling and turning and twisting Pashasan on the left. So coming right across so the armpit comes close to the outside edge of the thigh, you're holding the front leg of the chair. The left hand is moving back as far as possible to help you to turn, roll the front of the left shoulder back and press the back ribs in as you exhale and twist. Use the inhale to lengthen and the exhale to twist more and more. Check that your knees still have that idea of connection so the hips remain stable. Soften the jaw and the tongue. Don't allow the throat to be tense with the effort of twisting. Letting the organs roll, letting the organic body move, be cleansed, be vascularized. Hands then gently releasing. Rolling the hands behind the railing of the chair to get that extra lift, the broadness in the side ribs. Just observe. And then release. Now turning around and hook your legs over the top railing of the chair so you're facing backwards. And now lifting the left arm up, exhale and turn and twist to the right. And again, find the outside edge of that thigh in a very similar action. And walk that right hand back so you're holding the side of the seat. Roll the front of your right shoulder back. Press the shoulder blades in to open the chest, head back. Now with an exhalation, roll your left abdomen to the right. And exhale, release. Stabilize, centralize, then lift the right arm up and exhale and turn and twist to the left, using the outside edge of the thigh with the right tricep and moving the left hand back all the way to the outside edge of the seat as you turn, as you twist. Roll the front of your left shoulder back, find the shoulder blades and press them in to open the chest and roll now the right abdomen to the left strongly with your exhalation. And then exhale and release. And just come to Yoga Mudrasan. Forehead down. Centralize. Have the inner feet touching, the inner ankles touching, the inner knees touching. And move the trapezius muscles down the back to clear the neck, to quieten the brain. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Widening the legs apart now so that the feet are on each side of the chair and from there just coming off the chair and coming to standing. We're going to use our chair now to do a supported downward dog. So you're going to need two blocks and a blanket. The two blocks will be for your hands, so place them on the mat just as I have. 
in front of the front seat of the chair and the blanket will be so that you have no pain when the metal hits the roots of the thighs. Now standing at the back of the chair, go ahead and place yourself in such a way that that top seat of the chair where the blanket is, is going to press the tops of your thighs upwards, press the buttock bones upwards. And now find length in the front spine, length in the abdominal cavity. As you extend and you place yourselves down, the chin hooking on the seat of the chair, the hands on the blocks. Walk the hands forward as far forward as they can, remembering that as the body becomes more accustomed to this, the arms will stretch, release, and you can keep walking the blocks forward. See how the front throat is being kept long because the chin is lifted. Go with the action of the chair by lifting the buttock bones higher. So rather than resisting the chair, absorb the blanket, the top railing of the chair, into the hip, into the top groins, into the roots of the thighs. And with that action, push the front thighs back and lift the buttock bones higher to the sky. Notice how the body is being so beautifully held in this way. Normally when we do downward dog, we often shorten the entire front trunk. And here the chair is helping that front trunk to stay open, even as the buttock bones are lifted. So the entire spine is getting a stretch, the front trunk, the arms. And now inhaling, looking up, and slowly making your way back out to standing. We're going to be coming to some fabulous supported back bends on the chair now. So you're going to need a little bit more equipment. You'll need a bolster, a strap, and two blankets. One blanket is for comfort. This is the blanket that goes on the seat of the chair. The bolster is to place your head on when you go backwards. And the blanket is just to give a little height to the bolster in case your head doesn't quite reach the bolster. Then taking your strap, Go ahead and seat yourself in the chair so that you're facing backwards. So you thread the legs through the back seat of the chair. The strap is going to come around the thighs, tightening it up so that the thighs stay parallel and the knees don't roll out. Have the buckle right in the middle of the thighs so the buckle doesn't hurt the flesh. Now we need to move our buttocks all the way forward to the front seat of the chair so that it helps to move the tailbone, the sacrum, towards the feet. And the other seat of the chair will help to push the shoulder blades in. So go ahead and start to lie down by moving the buttocks forward until you find that front seat of the chair. Lying back until you feel the other seat pressing against the shoulder blades, a little bit on the bottom part of the shoulder blades, not too far up. And now stretch the arms back and reach for your bolster, your blanket, and move them in until the crown of the head feels support. Then thread the arms underneath the chair, inside the chair, and reach for the hands with the back railing, rolling the front shoulders back and then go ahead and stretch the legs straight. Keeping the feet hip distance apart, heels down, toes up, feet alert, stretching the legs. And here we are in our supported Vipariti Dandasan. Very important to use the chair to guide the body, to directionalize the body, not to just lie there passively. So keep moving the sacrum towards the heels, bringing the pubic bone up to the front throat rolling the front shoulders back and using that part of the chair that's pressing into the upper back into the shoulder blades to see what it means to dig the upper back in to dig the back ribs in to get that curvature in the upper back that opens the chest the crown of the head is connected and with that connection you can keep moving the trapezius muscles away from the ears so the neck stays long so there's no compression in the neck Keep the heels firm, pressing into the floor so the legs don't become passive. Want to keep that aliveness in the legs. The middle buttocks moving up to the sky. The anus moving to the reproductive organs. The sacrum moving towards the heels. The backs of the legs are well stretched. Use the inhalation to create a sensation of experiencing more and more length in the front abdominal cavity. Drawing the left navel and the right navel up to the left front ribs and the right front ribs. And after that length, find a spreadingness, a broadeningness. Feel the armpit chest alive, the back armpit rolling to the front armpit and the front shoulder bones rolling back. The trapezius muscles moving down the back and that chair pressing into the upper back. Bringing more and more sensation, getting into that density of the chest, it's a hard area to reach. 
and now releasing the hands still staying in the pose just taking the arms out from underneath the chair and now stretching the arms straight behind you so our second variation of Vipariti Dandasana keep the palms facing each other so the shoulders have a way to be broad squeeze the elbows straight and by stretching the arms stretch the skin of the armpit more intensely keep stretching the arms walking the fingertips back as much as possible keep the buttocks moving up to the sky so the lumbar doesn't get any compression and keep pressing the thoracic and the dorsal spine into the upper back to open the chest feel the broadness now that's coming to the rib cage to the lungs to the intercostal muscles and allow the front face to recede into the back skull the eyes to move backwards before bending the elbows and with your fingertips holding on to your elbows to your upper arms the forearms resting on the bolster behind the head now use your fingertips to pull your elbow tips in two directions to the wall behind you and down to the floor and as you do this you'll find length coming to the sideways length coming to the armpits now press the shoulder blades in as you move the elbow tips to the floor and now you find an extra broadness an extra lift an extra opening coming to the chest what's happening to the feet to the toes now change the cross of your arms so doing the other side and again begin to pull the skin of the elbows to the wall behind you and down to the floor as you press the shoulder blades in making that imprint of the chest placing it from inside the sides of the neck are even and the tongue is passive descending into the throat keep using the chair to maximize your posture not being in conflict with it but absorbing the teaching of it into the cells of the body and now re-stretch the arms straight behind you palms facing each other shoulders moving away from the ears find that broadness squeeze the elbows straight stretch the body to its maximum capacity press the heels down stretch the arms stretch the fingertips away from you press the back body in press the middle buttocks up and observe what's happened to the breath have that smoothness that relaxes the nervous system so that the effect of the posture is deep keep stretching the arms to stretch the waist stretching the legs to stretch the waist and now bending the elbows go ahead and reach with your hands for the top railing of the chair in front of you bend the knees so the soles of the feet are on the floor but still keep lying down we're not coming out just yet and remove the sacrum towards the knees to relieve any tension you might have taken on in the lumbar spine just observe centralize neutralize again feel evenness between left between right we're going to be coming from here to supported kaputasan so you're now going to slide yourselves backwards so the buttocks are moving forwards until your knees and your shins can come onto the floor and your upper back is still on the seat of the chair so you're coming through with the torso underneath that railing take your time coming into it feeling until comfortably the tops of the feet can rest the buttocks on the heels and you'll feel a distinct archingness in the upper back at which point you'll bring the arms back bending the elbows and holding onto your elbow tips supported kaputasan press the roots of the thighs down don't let the thighs come up don't let the buttocks come up and as the roots of the thighs press down from there you can better stretch the front waists the front spine the abdominal cavity keep pulling the tips of the elbows back to the wall behind you and down to the floor as you press the shoulder blades in and up in and up penetrating the armpit chest more deeply keep the sides of the neck even as you re-stretch the arms behind you parallelize palms facing each other shoulders broad and change the cross of the arms supported kaputasan on the other side avoid pushing the chin up avoid bulging the forehead up keep allowing the entire front face to recede into the back skull keep the roots of the thighs pressing down the buttocks heavy stretching the front waists stretching the abdominal cavity bringing space to the organs length to the anterior spine keep allowing the back body to flow downwards from the trapezius muscles to the hips with each exhalation and press the dorsal spine the shoulder blades in to open the chest keep the fingertips firm pulling the tips of the elbows back and down back and down stretching the tricep the armpit skin the armpit chest 
And now exhale, release the hands, and with your hands hold the railing in front of your chest. And don't think about sliding out of the chair, it's very easy to come up. You're just going to sit up and as you come up, you're going to push with your hands the chair down so the chair moves with you and the seat of the chair will now be supporting your back body. The railing of the front chair is pressing into the front thighs and you press down with the hands to roll the shoulders back and to have that length to the front chest and that openness. Feel the seat supporting the back body, gently pressing it in, bringing that firmness that stabilizes and opens the front body more. Coming from here to Bharavajasan, so turning and twisting to the right, the left hand holds the railing, the right hand reaches behind for the leg of the chair, and the seat of the chair is pressing the back ribs in as you turn and twist, rolling the front shoulders back, roots of the thighs pressing down. And now exhaling, releasing, turning and twisting Bharavajasan on the left hand side, using the left hand on the back leg of the chair, rolling the front of the left shoulder back, right arm is pulling, allow the seat to press the back ribs in as you turn and twist around that so you feel much more openness in the chest that you might normally in a Bharvajasan. Soft and relaxed breath as you exhale and release back to the front. So a nice big sequence there. We can feel a definitive shift, a shaping of the body, an energetic expansion. We're going to be coming out now, so this can be a little bit awkward. Just make your way out, whatever works for you. Remember to move your straps first or you'll feel very stuck. And we will be making ourselves ready now for Shavasan using the chair, our last and final pose. So moving your bolster, moving your strap, moving one of your blankets and having the other blanket on the chair so that the metal of the chair doesn't create a coldness in the calf. You're going to lie down on your backs with your feet facing the chair, your legs bent and your calves resting on the seat of the chair. The legs should be completely comfortable, the knees should be allowed to widen. Roll the shoulders back one at a time with the palms facing up to the sky so the back body is supported on the floor and the chest is open. And close the eyes. Observe that you're resting right on the middle of the back of the skull so the sides of the neck are even. Soften the face. Allow the eyeballs to rest completely in the eye sockets. Make the tongue passive and let the lower jaw hang off the top jaw in complete softness. If there's any arch in the lower back, make sure to move the buttocks towards the chair so the lower back is completely supported. And once the lower back is completely supported, the abdomen will then begin to relax and rest on the spine. Let the breathing be soft and natural. And with each exhalation, make the body more and more passive, more and more inert. Surrendering completely to the flow of gravity. Melting into the floor. Let the ears be drawn in towards each other, the eyes still receding backwards, the shoulders heavy and relaxed, the hips, the buttocks resting completely, the thighs passive, inert, the thigh muscles releasing their grip on the thigh bone, the knees soft. The shins and calves soft. The inner ankles rolling to the outer ankles. And the soles of the feet and the palms of the hands gentle, porous, resting. If you notice tension coming or mental thoughts disturbing the peace, Use the breath, use the exhalation to recreate that sensation of meltingness, of even spreading and melting into the ground. Allowing yourselves to be vulnerable, making yourselves open, humble. And through this, having an innocence, 
a freshness, a resting in the core. Observe that peacefulness. Observe the lightness that comes from having this heaviness, this inertness. The outer body resting, the inner body free. The mind smooth, clear. Filled with the awareness of this experience. Resting completely as this awareness. Resting in all that is. And then slowly, gently, without disturbing yourselves, just begin to wiggle the fingers, to wiggle the toes, to feel that awareness rising up to the surface. A little more movement, moving the ankles. The four gently bending the knees towards you. Inner feet touching, inner knees touching. Feel that symmetry between left, between right. Feel the awareness slowly rising up to the surface. The four gently rolling over to the right hand side and coming to sit one last time in Vajrasan with the seat of the chair right behind you. Reach with the hands, roll the shoulders back, chest lifted, and place the backs of the hands on the roots of the thighs with the palms turned open to the sky. Observe the difference in the inner space of the body Resting in that awareness, resting in that observation. Brain quiet. And breath smooth and even. Using the inhalation to recreate a sensation and experience of length in the front spine and the chest. And using the exhalation so that the trapezius muscles and the shoulder blades flow down the back towards the hips. having the awareness of that inner loop, the inhale rising up, the exhale flowing down. The eyes receding, the eardrums being drawn in towards each other, as if in a faraway place, observing all of this and more from a distance, the sensations inside the body, the sensations outside the body the sounds that are being heard, the tastes that are being tasted, observing all of these at the same time. Everything changing, everything flowing, a rich experience. And staying constant in that awareness, allowing the change, the experience to flow through. Just observing, just resting, just being. And then when you feel ready, gently allow the eyelids to open. Observing the visual input without accentuating one thing over the other. Just taking in the full richness of what the eyes notice. In this way, through the senses, through the awareness, coming back into your days, into your lives. Namaste. I hope you've enjoyed this practice with the chair. I hope we practice again together soon. Thank you.